Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect. Within the nation of Israel, and Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as Jewish or life foreigners scattered abroad. That may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but our Israelites, and I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch on Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Habakkuk Wadash. And um, this lesson is just inspired by a few things I was meditating on last night uh, before I went to bed, and I was thinking about... Uh, the best day of all of our lives. All right. Ottawa and Ratazai, you know, we'd be a part of that number uh, shown for it to be uh, uh, the faithful. OK, who are uh, promised salvation. But I was thinking about that day uh, when Yahweh Shai all right, uh, returns and uh, physically uh, liberates us all right, from this captivity, man. And it reminded me of the book of uh, Malachi. Let's start off with this in the book of Malachi. Chapter uh, four, and I'm going to start at verse one. It says, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Right. And that day is speaking of what the nuclear destruction that's to come. All right. It says and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Right. Verse two. But unto you. That fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. All yeah. right. So Yahweh Shai, when he returns, he's coming with healing. All right. And um, that main healing is going to come through what? All right. Us getting those new bodies. That's why it says in the book of uh, First Corinthians, let's uh, slot over to there real quick. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse uh, 51, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, right? So we're going to be changed, okay? We're going to be likened unto Yahweh Shad, man, all right? The body that he has wherein he's able to subdue all things as it is written in the book of uh, Philippians, man. We're going to be likened unto that, all right? that power and um, glory. All right. We're not going to amount to the same amount of power and glory. Okay. But it's going to be made very clear that we are gods. All right. We've been brought in this low estate. We've been suffering. All right. Put under the curses. Right. Showing you the might of our power, because when we get into the kingdom and, and uh, uh, these nations see, all right, the, the glory and the, and, and the power and the honor that we have, man, it's, it's even going to uh, show forth <laughs> that, man, that the Lord, uh, he put us in this predicament because of our own sins and our iniquities, as it is written in the book of Ezekiel. As a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and grab that. Got to make the point a little bit more clear. Um, let me find it in my scriptures first. All right. This is Ezekiel chapter 39 and verse uh, 23. It says, and the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore, hid on my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. All right. So the Lord is going to make it known, man, that we were just brought in this low estate because of our iniquities and our sins, man. All right. There's no way that these nations could uh, uh, conquer and, and, and rule over us unless it was us being punished by our power. All right. By our Lord, our father. OK, and that's what happened. Right. But the Lord is going to make that very evident, man, because once again, it's going to be a clear separation. All right. A clear distinction between our nation. All right. The nation of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans. All right. And the rest of the heathen in the kingdom. All right. It even says that also in the book of Isaiah, man. All right. How uh, it pretty much talks about how there's going to be a clear difference. OK. Between the uh, the holy seed. All right. And the rest of these nations. Right. So let's go back to this in the book of First uh, Corinthians chapter 15. 
This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. All right. And when we get changed, when we get those new bodies, all right, we're never going to sin again. Okay. That is the new covenant. All right. The new covenant is having the law, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts to where we can't sin, to where we can't go off. Once again, we were brought into captivity in these nations ruling over us because of our sins, because of our iniquities, man. So the Lord is going to take that completely away. All right. Uh, like it talks about in the book of Hebrews, the uh, eighth chapter, and Paul was quoting the book of Jeremiah uh, when he was uh, talking about the new covenant, which is for the house of Israel and the house of Judah, which is the northern and the southern kingdom. All right. But we're never going to sin again. OK, and that's only going to be allotted to the Israelites. All right. But it says uh, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. All right. That last trump is when what those nuclear missiles are coming down. All right. And what the elect is going to be beam, uh, being beamed up simultaneously. All right. It talks about in the book of uh, Revelation, the 11th chapter. Just to show that uh, Revelation chapter 11 and verse um, uh, 12, it says, and they heard. I'm going to start at verse 11. It says, and after three days and a half. All right. Uh, in that three days and a half is 350 years. All right. When the southern and northern kingdom were oppressed together all right, the beginning of that. All right. Starting in 1619. All right. When they uh, got those slave ships and and uh, gathered up the, uh, the southern kingdom and brought them here to the Americas to uh, to go through captivity with the northern kingdom. All right. Pursuant to Jeremiah says the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. When that Jeremiah was written. All right. You had the northern kingdom that was already carried away in the captivity in the Assyrian uh, Empire. All right. So that was talking about a future prophecy of us being oppressed together here in America, right? But that was the beginning in 1619 of that three days and a half, which is 350 years, right? But it says, and after three days and a half, uh, the spirit uh, of life from the Most High entered into them. And that's what? That spirit of life is that wisdom, okay? That breath of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right? That came through what? Prophesying. Like it talks about in the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. All right. Starting off with who? Elder Abba Bivens, whom Yahweh Shai had uh, uh, told us that he would come again before that great and terrible day. All right. And return us back into the father and vice versa, man. OK. So this is where we're at, man. This is this is prophecy. OK. So from the time of 1619. All right. To, uh, to what? 1969. Right. That's 350 years. The elder Abba Bibbis went out there and started teaching, letting us know who we are. Okay. Preaching Yahweh Shah. But it says, um, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up uh, up to heaven in a cloud, which is a what? A chariot, man, a so called UFO. And their enemies beheld them. Right. It says in the same hour. So at the same time of what the elect being taken up into the chariots. All right. Getting changed, getting those new bodies simultaneously. And at the same time, at the same hour, was there a great earthquake? And what is going to cause that great earthquake is going to be the nuclear missiles. All right. That nuclear destruction. It says in the 10th part of the city fell and in the earthquake, there were slain of men 7000 and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the power of heaven. OK. But just showing you that what, man, this is going to be happening simultaneously. The elect being beamed up and changed. All right. Well, what? This place is going to be being destroyed, man. America. All right. And missiles are going to be shut off in various other places as well. All right. Back in First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse uh, 52 in a moment and a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. All right. That last trump is the nuclear missiles. OK. For the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. OK. All right. So we're going to get those new bodies, man. All right. Verse uh, 54. So when this corruptible have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. All right. And this is the day that we're looking towards, man. All right. Because when this happens, man, there will be no more sorrow. No more tears, no more crying, no more death. None of that. That is going to be the, the end of all suffering and all of our sorrow for eternity. Everything that we've gone through from lifetime to lifetime, man. All right. 
the tears that we've cried, the, the, the pain that we've gone through as a nation, as a people, all of that is going to be over. All right. All of that is going to be over. OK, any worries, anxieties, doubts, fear, any, any of that, man, all that is going to be stripped away completely when Yahweh Shah returns, man. Once again, he's coming with healing in his wings. So let's go back to that in the book of Malachi, Malachi chapter four, and verse two. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth as and grow up as calves of the stall. Now, I have read this in the other translation in the NLT. I'm going to read it here. It says, but for you who fear my name. The son of righteousness being Yahweh Shai, all right, uh, will rise with healing in his wings and you will go free. OK, we are going to be set free. The earth is going to be our playground. The outer space is going to be our playground, man. All right. We're going to be literate. We're going to be set free. OK, we're going to be able to exhale. We're going to be able to freely explore the wor world, go different places, man. All right. Just live. Be a man. OK. You know, no more battle between the flesh and the spirit. Wondering if you're doing right. All right. Fighting the flesh of doing thoughts. All everything is going to going to be cohesively within the will of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. Every thought that comes into your mind is going to be pleasing. Every action that you take is going to be pleasing. OK. No more wickedness, man. Right. It says, and you will go free, leaping with joy like calves let out to pasture. And as I had uh, uh, as I was meditating last night and then I read this precept, I, I literally looked up videos of uh, uh, of calves. All right. Being let out to the pasture. All right. And when they're let out that fence, man, they're jumping and leaping. I was like, damn, I didn't even know cows uh, could, could jump <laughs> uh, like that, man, you know, because of how heavy they are. But man, they get out in that field, man, especially the, the little ones, the small calves, right? They get to jumping, running around in circles. They don't even know what to do with themselves, man. They're just full of joy. And that's what we're going to have, man. All right. We're going to have pure joy. All right. Pure joy. Nothing and nothing's going to be able to take away from uh, take away that joy from us, man. All right. Nothing's going to take away that joy from us. OK, for the things that the Lord is going to do for us, man. All right. Let me go ahead and go uh, over to uh, the book of Psalms 126. This is Psalms 126. All right. And this is why we're in this fight. All right. Because we're hoping to receive these things. All right. Even Yahweh Shai, he was thinking about the kingdom. OK, he was thinking about the reward that he was going to receive, man, which allowed him to endure what he went through. Says that in the book of uh, Hebrews, the uh, the twelfth chapter, man. All right, it says how he despised the shame, man. And you go into that phrase. It says to think little or nothing. All right, for what? For the joy that was set before him. All right. So we're gonna reach that point. All right. We're gonna work the, these tears that we cry and the pain that we're going through, man. It's gonna all be worth it, as this scripture is gonna go into. All right, Psalms one twenty six, and we'll just start at the top. It says, "When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream." All right. When the Lord gets us out of this captivity, man, it's going to be unbelievable. All right. It's going to be a uh, uh, jaw dropping as the saying goes, man. OK. I remember uh, it was uh, Elder uh, Big Dad. Man, <laughs> uh, we, we got we were blessed to have him come down and um, spend some time with us down here in Des Moines. You know, and um, I remember him mentioning, man, about he was like, man, I. Man, hey, when the Lord come, I can't remember if he said when the Lord come or how he worded it specifically, but it's along this lines, you know, Salakia. But he was like, man, I'm, I'm going to just be so happy. I might just roll around in the, in the grass for a couple of days, just rolling in the grass, just 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 because of pure joy. All right. <laughs> it's like, oh, my goodness, we actually made it out of this hell. <laughs> Scripture says in the book of Revelation, man, how they made it out of great tribulation. Man, we coming into some hard times, man. All right, we go through things that seem rough right now, but the times that we're entering into, man, the circumstances are gonna get uh gonna increase. All right, and that's why we have to focus on the spirit, focus on these words, because it says, "He whose mind is stayed upon the Lord, he'll keep him in perfect peace. You will have a tranquility of mind." All right, in these things that we're going into, the more that we're focused on uh, Yahweh Shimei, I will shine these words. 
All right. So that we can remain um, uh, stable in the times that we're entering into. All right. But going back into the point, man, is uh, hearing that I, I was just I was just filled with joy just hearing that, man. Like, hell, yeah, you, you can do that, <laughs> you know. I'm going to roll around, you know what I'm saying? You know, just speaking about the, the aspect of joy, you know, hey, Jake is going to be doing things in the kingdom, you know, especially first coming down. We're going to have to grab up them, uh, 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 them elites. All right. Go hem their ass up, bind their kings with uh, chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So we're going to be we're going to go to work. All right. We're going to have some fun. We're going to exhale. All right. <laughs> We gonna hey the Lord the Lord gonna un un unleash us man, all right and we are gonna go to work man and that's gonna be fun all right that's gonna be exciting man okay but anyways it says uh, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing, then said they among the heathen the Lord had done great things for them so all right once again the Lord is gonna. Uh, uh, show this in the sight of all the nations man just like all the nations saw our, our our uh us in this low estate all right our woman all on damn every every tv show just twerking just as soon as you see him it's just as, as soon as you look at him they just automatically just start twerking man that's just a, a damn shame just damn monkeys man niggas out here just acting the fool they 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 witness this man all right but just like they witness us in this low estate this embarrassing all right, as the state that we had that we were brought into because of our sins and our iniquities, man, they're gonna see the glory that the Lord is gonna bring upon us as well, man. All right, and they're gonna be amazed. All right, it even says that. Uh, let's let's grab this in the book of Jeremiah. Um, Jeremiah chapter uh, thirty three. They're gonna be amazed. All right, their jaws are gonna drop just like the Queen of Sheba. Just seeing the estate of King Solomon and the order of his kingdom and his and his uh, uh, servants and everything like that, man, it, it was jaw dropping, man. All right, even how people were exaggerating, all right, uh, or or how people were uh, uh, talking about the glory of uh, uh, King Solomon. Just to be clear, Salakia, as they were talking about the glory of King Solomon, man, it didn't even amount to what she actually saw, man. All right, you know. So how much more when we're in our purest form in the kingdom, all right, with our new bodies, okay, ruling over the nations, man. All right. It says, uh, Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse uh, nine. It says, and it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. And they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. All right. Let's read this in the NLT. Then this city will bring me joy, glory and honor before all the nations of the earth. The people of the world will see all the good I do for my people. All right, it's letting you know it's a specific group of people, but that's another lesson for another time, man. All right, because this is only going to be done for the nation of Israel, man. Okay, it says, and they will tremble with awe at the peace and prosperity I provide for them. So their jaws are going to drop like what? Man, the Lord, look, they're, they're, liter they're literally flying. Are you seeing this? They are literally flying. And look at how they decked out. Look at their garments. Look at, is that gold intertwined in their braids? <laughs> All right. In, in, in their clothing, you know, even when uh, Heliodorus got his ass kicked by the angels for trying to come into the, uh, 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 try and come in, in, and take the, uh, uh, take from the treasury. All right. It talked about how those angels were, um, I think it said excellent and beauty. If I'm not mistaken, it might have said excellent in beauty, but I know it said notable in strength as well, man. All right. And those were, you know, those were angels, man. So imagine how how we're going to be. We're going to be above the angels. OK, we're going to judge angels, meaning that we're going to give them orders and, and you know, and, and, and so on and so forth. They're going to be under our uh, under our rule in the kingdom. Right. It talks about that. And uh, Corinthians, how we're going to judge angels, you know, and other things as well. But nevertheless, all right, if they were notable in strength, all right, if they were excellent in beauty, all right, how much more the entire nation of Israel, man, this man, the Lord is going to beautify us. All right. No blemish. All right. 
Hey man, they going the nation's going to see us and and it's going to be they they're going to just bow. All right, they're just going to bow. Okay? Just our presence, man, you know? That's what we're that's what we're coming into, man. Okay? This is this is what we're coming into, all right? This world is going to see the same niggas and spicks that are being hated on, talk trash against that they come up against. They're going to be reigning over the nations. In a magnificent fashion, man. All right. It says, um, that's it in that in Jeremiah. Let's go back to this in Psalms 126 and verse uh, uh, three. The Lord had, it says, uh, verse two, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. All right. It says, turn again our captivity, O Yahweh, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Right. So we're laboring. All right. We're sowing tears. OK, we're going through different hardships and, and pain and this and that and the third. But we're going to reap joy everlasting for eternity. All right. Millions of years down the line, man. All right. The work that you're putting in right now, the labor that you're putting in right now is going to set you up for eternity. All right. To to be one of those men that get crowned by Yahweh Shai, that is going to that is going to reign with you for eternity. OK. People are going to be bowing millions of years down the line. All right. For being one of, to uh, to you for being one of those men. OK. That the Lord use. All right, to usher in the kingdom through the preaching of his word. All right, for enduring into the end, man. It says, um, verse six, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. All right, let's end it off with uh, this in the book of uh, St. John chapter 16. St. John 16 and verse 20. It says, verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. Right. And that's what we've been doing, man. Weeping, lamenting, all right, crying for our sins, our iniquities. OK, it says coming to the Lord with a uh, weeping and uh, uh, fasting and praying, roughly paraphrasing it. Right. We've been in the house of mourning. OK, but it says, uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. So all that sorrow, man, is going to be turned into uh, turned into joy. All right. As a matter of fact, that reminds me of another precept in the in the book of Jeremiah. Um, I just know the word double is in there. Or it might be Isaiah. Yep, yeah, this is Isaiah chapter sixty one and verse uh. Six, it says, but ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our power. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Right. So the these nations are going to be giving us the, the, the best of the best of all their substance. Right. Of all their labor. We're going to receive that, man. OK. It says. Um, it says, verse seven, for your shame, you shall have double and for your confusion, you shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in the land, they shall possess the double everlasting joy shall be unto them. man. so for the shame, we're going to receive the double. All right. For all the sorrow that we uh, went to uh, went through, man, we're going to receive <laughs> uh, great blessings because of that, man. All right. That's going to surpass the pain and suffering that we went through. Like it talks about in the book of Corinthians, man. All right. It talks about how what, man? Uh, let's let's go ahead and grab it. Temporal. Seeding an eternal way to glory. Verse 17 of uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and uh, 17 for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Right. And it truly is a moment, man. When you compare, like it says in the book of Sirach. All right, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 18 and 10. As a drop of water into the sea and a gravel stone in comparison of the sand, so are a thousand years to the days of eternity. So if uh, 1,000 years, all right, 
1,000 years is like one grain of sand on the seashore. What is this small moment of affliction compared even to that? All right. It's, it's, it's nothing, right? It's nothing, man. Like I said, we're going to receive happiness and joy for an eternity. Thousands, millions of years, billions of years down the line. And it's hard to even fathom that. All right. But that far even down the line, man. Okay. Are we going to be having <laughs> smiles, joy, happiness? All right. Being amazed, constantly being amazed by the glory of the Lord and the different things that he's showing us and, you know, all types of things that we'll be doing, man. All right. Going out to different planets, galaxies and everything like that, man. Right. But that's, man, that's so, far, man, when you look at, when you compare that time, all right, a thousand years, okay, how, how much, how much is just this small moment of suffering that we got to get through, all right? Why wouldn't we lay down our lives, man? All right, just for a small moment, okay, we have to put our mindset in a, a in a God-like mentality, man, all right? It's not about just the right here and the right now. No, we're being set up for eternity, Okay, so let's go back to this. Second Corinthians 4 and 17 for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. All right. And when Yahweh Shai returns, man, that is going to be the beginning of <laughs> Everlasting joy, mercy, man. All right. Everlasting joy. No more sorrow. No more pain. No more death. Right. Being able to breathe, exhale. It's all over. All right. And that day is approaching soon, man. All right. So I'm going to end it right there, Lord. What I was at a fine. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. The honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone rule well. Peace and salutations to the hope of the leg pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say shalom.